Welcome everyone, and thank you for being a part of the Glory Day community. We're so glad you're here. If you're watching via YouTube, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications to cue you when there are new videos. And be sure to visit, like, and follow our Facebook page for posts, shares, and upcoming events and videos. Want to learn more about our ministry? Visit our website at gloria-day.com. You'll find ways to get involved, links to archived worships and helpful items for your spiritual journey, activities for the family, and more. Thank you so much for being a part of the Gloria Day community. We're so glad you're here and that you're joining us for worship. Hello and welcome to worship. It's been a full week here at Gloria Day and we have some announcements as we get ready to worship God together. First, this Wednesday, September 21st, starts all things Wednesday evening. Water's Edge is at 6.30. Confirmation, youth group, and chances to connect with other parents will follow Water's Edge starting around 7.15 and ending at 8.15. Come to Water's Edge, 6.30, a midweek oasis this Wednesday. 40 days of sit, rest, love begin this Tuesday. If you want to be a part of it, there are a few ways you can do that. Julie can send a daily email with a devotion and some ideas for faith practices, or you can join three Tuesday evening online Zoom gatherings this month. They're led by Julie. They last for an hour, and it's a chance to share faith together. You can email Julie Stevens or give us a call if you're interested. The well begins again Monday, September 19th at 7 p.m. and it's meeting at the Purple Goat. This is proving a good location where women over 21, 21 and older, can gather for conversation around faith and around a beverage of your choice. It's the third Monday of the month, so invite your friends and come on out to the Purple Goat. If you have the well, you also have Theology Pub, and this will get started Monday, September 26th at 7 p.m., where the group will meet at Whistle Binkies South. This is for men 21 and over who want to get together around food and beverages to have casual but meaningful conversation around different topics of faith and life. Dwelling in the Word also comes back this Thursday, September 22nd at 1 p.m. 
This group is a group of women that investigates and explores the scripture that will be preached on the following Sunday. It's a great chance to connect over scripture, either in person or online. You can reach out to Pastor Marla if you're interested. This whole month, we continue our back to school playlist sermon series where each week we take a song from pop culture and explore what it might be saying to us in our lives of faith. Also this, uh, so that will continue this morning. And finally, this is a special Sunday as well because it's the 10 year anniversary of our Epic 1-8 service. Ever since it began, Epic has stood for experiential, participatory, image-driven, and communal. And those adjectives continue to capture the spirit of what Epic is about. You may also be familiar with the theme verse for Epic 1-8, which is Acts 1-8, which speaks of the good news going to Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. More about that in the sermon a little bit later, but for now, again, welcome to worship. Celebrate with us. Let's worship together and sing together and pray together. We start with song. Thanks for being here. is Julie Stevens from the Looking Within Center. Did you know that you have two voices inside of you and these voices vie for our attention every moment of every day of our lives? 
One voice is our small separated self. It's very focused on me, me, me. It's usually looking through a lens of scarcity and pessimism where nothing is ever enough. The other is our Christ self. It's a much more expansive voice. It's one that can access the hope and the strength and the possibilities that are found in Christ, even in the most challenging of situations. It's our Christ self that echoes words of the Apostle Paul that he wrote in some books and letters in the New Testament in the Bible, where he said things like, if Christ is for us, who can be against us? Or nothing can separate us from the love of God. Or it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So it's this presence of Christ that's inside of us that th sees things always from abundance and possibility. I've come to realize that a large part of our spiritual journey is just frankly becoming conscious of the fact that we have these two voices. To spot the roller coaster that our separated smaller self takes us through and we're in these moods that we can't explain why we're in them. Or we're always in this dark cloud and we're maybe experiencing BEV, those three letters standing for bitterness, entitlement, or victimhood. And sometimes there's very good reasons for situations or moods we find ourselves in, sometimes not so much. And it's our small self kind of coming to the fore and how we're experiencing that day or that moment. And the key is to catch ourselves early in those moods to, to see, oh, wow, why am I being so pessimistic and kind of hopeless for not really any good reason or experiencing bad bitterness, entitlement, or victimhood. And it's helpful if we have regular things, kind of checkpoints or triggers that help us to nip these kinds of moods and nip our small self kind of in the bud when it's casting us into these types of inner experiences, maybe checking in with our body or our, our moods, frankly, just doing a check-in a couple times a day and seeing where you stand and realizing, wow, there's maybe not a good reason for why I'm like that, accessing your Christ self. Maybe we have things like taking walks in the woods, which just helps reset our hearts and our minds or meditating, doing yoga or centering prayer, reading the Bible or other materials that lift and lift our spirits and feed our Christ selves. All of those are really important to encourage you in any practices or things that you have to do, that you have, that you do, that help your Christ self to be fed and stronger than your small self. And it's something we'll always fight with, our separated selves, our small selves are always there, but our Christ self can be built up and strengthened. As the singing bowl sounds now, I'd invite you to take, as always, a deep breath. And in this moment, and then in the coming week, just notice, yeah, you have two voices. And I encourage you in the ways that you feed that Christ self and live out of that presence of Christ that lives in you that functions out of abundance, possibility, and love. I hope you experience that in the coming weeks, coming days, and now as our same wolf sounds. Our reading today is from Acts chapter one. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven.
So the song, Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi. It's just the story about Tommy. He used to work on the docks and Gina worked in the diner all day. They're just a couple of kids doing the best they can, taking leaps of faith, living on a prayer. That song came out in 1986, which means for 36, count them, 36 years we've been hearing about Tommy and Gina, and that's a long time. So for the love of all things holy, they've got to be more than halfway there by now. Can we agree on this? I mean, for us, when we think about Epic 1-8 and we're celebrating this anniversary today, we haven't been at it for 36 years, but we have been at it for 10, which, Chris, that's pretty crazy. What do you think about all that? I mean, so for about a third of my life, <laughs> we've been having this service. Like, I seriously have shoes older than you. <laughs> Here's Lord. the thing. If we've been doing this as long as the song's been out, <laughs> that would be my whole life. <laughs> well, that, and, and you're having a birthday like this week. And, That's true. Friday. And so your whole life, you've been hearing about Tommy and Gina. Tommy. The whole time. Still working at the docks. <laughs> Gina's still keeping it real in the diner i mean the whole time that's all oh, i've been doing man. they gotta be further than that they, by they, now. they have to be more than way there by by now i mean so i came to gloria day 11 years ago now and as july of, of of 2011 and i'll never forget when i got here uh amy baker was the former children's family director and and the now retired pastor emeritus Charles Ortloff, uh, I was talking, I'll, I remember like it was yesterday, we we're standing out in the hallway and they'd had a couple of experiments, kind of trial runs at doing a different kind of a worship service. And they didn't have anything really kind of uh, established yet, but they had this manila folder packed full of, of surveys. Amy hands me this folder and then Charles looks at me and says, you figure it out now. And then laughs all the way down the hallway as I'm standing there holding this this file folder. It's crazy. Oh uh, yeah, that's pretty wild. So I came on just a year later uh, in June of 2012, and uh, I came on so that we could fix it, right? <laughs> right. <exactly. laughs> yeah, we had to get a ringer. <laughs> no, totally kidding. Totally kidding. But I I do have to say, when I came, I was so excited that we were trying something new. Um, I had studied church music and was looking forward to being part of a community where. Uh, we had some license to, to try some new things and to wonder together about what the church might look like moving forward. And I'm, I've been so, so excited to be part of it ever since. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. When I got here all those years ago, prior to coming here, I almost quit being a pastor. I was a little burned out and I was a lot frustrated because like, I wanted to be a part of a community that wasn't afraid to try. Right. I mean, just legitimately just try. I wanted to be a part of a of a community that wasn't afraid to try and fail. I wanted to be a part of a, of a, of a community that had a creative license. And you know what? Like I still do. And I, and I found that experience. I found it here. And, and, and then, so we started Epic all those years ago. Um, and, and it wasn't just about me and it wasn't just about you. And it wasn't just about the staff who we've worked alongside of all these years. It was about the entire community. It was about all of us together making something great and beautiful. And I'm so glad that we did because it's really been a transformative part of, of our life together around here. We've grown bigger, we've grown deeper and the journey continues, right? The journey continues and we are still transforming and we are still evolving, but it begs the question, now what? Yeah, so when I came on, uh, I was not too far out of college and I had, again, studied church music. I had um, a great experience in my faith community and some really important people to me growing up. Um, but I also knew that there were a lot of people around me that didn't have that. Um, a lot of friends that over the years have, have found that they, they don't really feel comfortable in churches. Um, you know, uh, my sister has a number of special needs and some of the things that, that she needed, uh, the church communities we were in at times weren't able to provide. And I really wanted to be part of a place uh, that could think about things in those ways and, and really make meaningful places for people. Uh, and it's been great to see that happen here. And this community is a lot of that. It is a lot of what I imagined, but at the same time, there's still a lot of work to be done. Yeah. And are we halfway there? Are we more than halfway there? What's next? Now what, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks, Chris. Um, 
And I, and I think that's, that's precisely why I go to our theme verse for the day. Again, our, it's called Epic 1-8, and 1-8 comes from Acts 1-8. Uh, and, and that is um, where I think we find uh, kind of an, a clue, uh, breadcrumbs, if you will, as to, to now what. Uh, Jesus is saying farewell to his disciples, and, and, and he gives them a mission as he's saying farewell to them. He says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Jesus is about to mysteriously leave the scene. And, and something new is about to begin. So his friends who have been with him for all these years, they say, now what? Like, now what do we do? We do? And Jesus answers, you will be my witnesses. In other words, you will, you will care for people. You will show love to people. You will feed the hungry. You will house the homeless. You will work for peace and justice. You will build community and connection. You will be my hands and my feet and my eyes and my ears and my heart locally, regionally, and globally to the ends of the earth. And here's the thing. What I love about this statement that, of, that, that Jesus says is, he says, you will be, okay? You will be, it's ongoing, it's active, it's future oriented. It's a work in progress. And it started, what, 2000 years ago? And they went for it. And they took a leap of faith. They were living on a prayer. They, they tried and they failed and they succeeded and they failed and they tried and succeeded and on and on and on, but they kept trying. It continued with the next generation and then the next one after that, and the one after that, and the one after that. We've been trying and succeeding and failing and trying and succeeding and failing, rinse, wash, and repeat, really for a couple thousand years. At Epic, we've been at it for 10 years. At Gloria Day, we've been at it for 70 years. And just like Tommy and Gina, I'm not even sure that we're halfway there yet. But the work, and the play, it continues. But here's what I want you to know. We're not done yet. Okay, I mean, we're not done yet. We're not done at Gloria Day. We're not done with Epic 1-8. There's still work to be done in a world where pain and beauty are tangled and commingled. We, we're called to be a home for the spiritually homeless. We're called to be the kind of people with more questions than answers. We, we can be a, a place of humility in the face of the mystery, a place of welcome for those who are too often on the outside looking in. We can be the kind of people who take leaps of faith and try and live on a prayer and, and, and go on adventures and live with laughter and joy and love, the kind of laughter and joy and love that is thoroughly and completely contagious. The challenge of today, and the challenge of the, of, the, of the verse that I just read, is to somehow be able to do this and try when we gather, whether it's at Epic 1-8 or in our traditional service or in a Water's Edge service or online, but to continue to try as we gather and, and, and then do that, continue trying locally, regionally, and globally. Friends, I'm so glad that we've been on this journey together. Whether or not you've ever actually walked through the doors of this place, whether or not you've ever been to Epic or, or you've only been to traditional or, some com or Water's Edge or some combination thereof, I'm so glad that we are on this journey together. I'm thankful, particularly on a day like this, for the journey that started 10 years ago and the journey that continues today. And in the name of Tommy and Gina, I'm pretty sure that we're not even halfway there yet. But I can't wait to see what the next leg of the journey has in store. So let's keep trying. Let's keep taking leaps of faith. Let's keep living on a prayer and inviting and, and let's keep looking and watching and, and, and let's be seeing the beautiful thing 
that we can create when we all come together and work as one. Trusting in God who brings us into a new future every day. Let's join together in prayer. God of surprises, you bring us together for the sake of the world around us and for our own sake. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and joy, that all the world may be drawn into your beautiful presence. Give us eyes to see how you are turning the world around, perhaps even through us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, as we look out into the world, we continue to see kids of all ages finding their feet at the beginning of a new school year, teachers making homes out of new classrooms, parents and grandparents doing their best to settle into new routines. All the while, we trust that you are walking with them. Grant them and us patience and steadfastness and hope in your justice and peace, even as it shows up on the playground or in the hallway. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of transformation, you have turned the church around more times than we can count, but sometimes we develop amnesia, leaving gaps in our own stories. We thank you for the way your spirit is always moving here at Gloria Day. We thank you for the new endeavors that have come out of the last 10 years, including Epic 1-8, and all for the, for the, also for those endeavors that have come out of the last 10 months we celebrate your presence among us and pray that you would keep us turning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, sometimes we don't know what to pray, yet we trust in your compassion and grace. Bring your comfort to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We especially pray on this day for Joanne Chadwick and Margreta O'Connor. Still us with your healing presence. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God, among all the ways you transform us, perhaps the most remarkable is the way you bring life out of death. Continue to instill in us resurrection hope, reminding us of those gathered whom we can't see or touch, yet whose presence we continue to feel. We pray for the families of those who have died recently, especially for Pat Perkins and her family in the wake of the death of her husband, John, this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. In our gospel lesson for today, Jesus says, to his followers, he says, you will be my witnesses. You will be my hands and my feet, my eyes and my ears and my heart, first in Jerusalem, then in Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. That is, his followers are being sent on a journey, first locally, then regionally, and then globally to the ends of the earth. And that's a, that's a long way. In order to make that kind of a journey, you need some food for the journey. And so that's part of what this meal is all about. We receive sustenance. We receive food for the journey. A little bit of bread, a little bit of wine or juice, so we can be filled and energized for the road ahead. And with that in mind, we remember that it was in the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread. And he gave thanks. And he gave it for all to eat, saying, this is my body and it's given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup, it's the new covenant in my blood that is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. As often as we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we proclaim God's kingdom until it comes, as we pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And 
Everybody is welcome to share in this meal. So I invite you to do just that. Maybe you're with friends or families or roommates. Share this bread and this cup with one another. If you're on your own, know that we are all together in spirit and receive this bread because this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is sustenance for the journey for us to keep trying and moving and living out the mission which Christ sends us on today. Reflect on all of these things as we hear this song. Fall programming is launching. This past Wednesday evening, we had a grill out with over 200 people together outside, connecting with each other, sharing a meal, listening to music, playing games, blowing bubbles, and face painting. It was a fantastic evening. I wanna say a huge thank you to Christelle Bailey, Beth Krolak, and Carol Fisher for putting the details together, and to all of our volunteers for making this an amazing, fun, and safe event for everybody. This coming Saturday, September 17th, is the first Reset Mini Retreat. 
Reset Mini Retreats are an oasis for the soul, a launch pad for your spirit and a safe space for conversation, and it's a place to reset your journey. Led by our very own Julie Stevens, people from all over the states will connect and reset this fall. <laughs> what an awesome way to start our fall programming. I am so excited for everything happening and I am looking forward to the coming programming year. This is what it looks like to be part of a creative and caring community and God is doing amazing things through us. Our ministry happens because of you and your generosity. If you would like to support the ministries at Gloria Day, you can give online or mail a contribution to church. This is how we are a community together and this is how we change the world. Thank you for sharing your hearts, your prayers, and your financial donations to the ministries at Gloria Day.
we've come to the end of our time to worship this morning together. We're so glad that you were here across the screens. And as always, hope that you'll join us again next week. Same time, same place at 930. And I hope in these coming days that you live with the hope and possibility, the abundance that's found in Christ that fills you every day. Now take with you these words of blessing and benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.